So you've got a hot tub and you know you've got to add chemicals to it, but there's a lot of different chemicals you could be adding. So what is the right order to add your hot tub chemicals in to make sure that you're doing it correctly? It seems like a simple question, right? Well, that's what we're covering in today's video, the correct order to add and adjust your hot tub chemicals so that you do it the right way. Hi, I'm Jeff Campbell from Hot Tub Owner HQ, and I'm glad you're here with me. First, I also want to mention, I have a free cheat sheet that walks you through everything that you need to know about hot tub maintenance from water chemistry to changing the water to filters, you name it. I cover it on this simple, free, downloadable, printable cheat sheet. Just go to hottubownerhq.com forward slash cheat sheet. That's all one word, no dashes, and download yours today. So before we start talking about chemicals, there's a couple of things I want you to do. First of all, open your cover all the way. That way, when you do add the chemicals, it's not spraying up and kicking up on the underside of your cover, which can damage and shorten the lifespan of your cover. Now, for the purposes of my video, I always cut the power before I turn the camera on. That's just so that it doesn't kick on while I'm making the video and create a lot of background noise. But for you, you are going to want to actually turn on all the jets and the water features so that it helps circulate the chemicals in your water that much faster. But what do we start with? What is first on the list? So always start by, of course, testing your water so that you know what you need to adjust. I just use simple test strips like these. I take a test strip out, I dip it in the water, for about two seconds I shake off the excess and then I kind of hold it up here as you can see it, my bromine levels are non-existent so I need to check my floater from tablets my alkalinity looks about right and my pH looks about right but it is also time for me to shock my hot tub which you should be doing once a week and that will naturally elevate the chlorine and bromine levels as well but if you don't want to do the test strip route you can actually take your water to Leslie's pool supply for free they will analyze it and then you can pull up the results of that analysis right on your phone or on your website or you can wait for them to print out a sheet for you in in the store and it's totally free. I have another video where I walk you through that entire process step by step. So just look for that video card right up here right now in case you want to check that out. But I do just use test strips. It's simple and easy. So we know we need to adjust the chlorine levels, but let's assume that we needed to adjust all of the levels. What do we start with? Well, first you always want to start by adjusting the alkalinity. What is alkalinity? Alkalinity measures the ability of your water to neutralize acid. Acid, of course, is part of the pH spectrum. There's low pH, which is acidic, and high pH, which is alkaline. And if you don't ever get the alkalinity right, the pH will never get balanced. And that can be hazardous both for you soaking in the water as well as your hot tub's equipment. So start with alkalinity, adjusting it up or down as needed. Most of the time you're gonna see products like this one that say alkalinity booster or alkalinity decreaser. Sometimes you'll see products that are designed to do both pH and alkalinity that say spa up or spa down. And as long as you need to adjust both, that's okay to use that. It's also worth mentioning very quickly that if you need to raise the alkalinity, the easiest way to do that is just by using regular household baking soda. That will be the same ingredient typically found in alkalinity booster. And alkalinity booster can be 15, 20 bucks, whereas a box of regular baking soda off the shelf of your grocery store, what, maybe 49 cents to a buck, something in that neighborhood? So if you need to raise the alkalinity, baking soda is definitely the way to go. Now, I will also say that if you have to make big adjustments to your water chemistry, wait about 30 minutes after adding the first chemical before you adjust the second one. That's to give the water time to acclimate to the chemical that you added because they do interact with one another. And if you add large quantities of multiple chemicals all at the same time, you may not get an accurate reading and they may interfere with each other and the ability to give you an accurate reading on your test strip. So minor adjustments, don't worry about it. Major adjustments, wait 30 minutes between each chemical. And then of course, once you've added everything you need to add, test that water again with another test strip and make sure everything is exactly where you want it to be. But what comes after alkalinity? Now, the next thing we need to do, of course, is adjust the pH. High pH is alkaline, low pH is acidic, and we do want it to be right there in that sweet spot of somewhere between 7.2 and 7.8. Again, I just use the color scale on the bottle of my test strips, though. And again, you've got pH up, pH down, or sometimes you'll see spa up and spa down. Any chemical, though, that is designed to affect alkalinity or pH will typically adjust both, at least in varying degrees. Some will definitely impact one more 
more than the other, but it's almost impossible to adjust one without slightly impacting the other. So do be aware of that. But after you've done the alkalinity, pH is definitely what you want to do next. Real quick before we keep going, if you like this video and you want to see more videos like it, hit that subscribe button for me. It sends a great signal to YouTube that, hey, this is a good channel worth showing to other people with similar interests to you. It's going to help me grow my channel and reach more people. So I really appreciate you taking the time to do that. So after we've done alkalinity and pH, now of course it is time to adjust your sanitizer. Sanitizer can be a variety of things. It can be liquid, it can be powder, it can be tablets, and it can be chlorine or bromine typically. And there are some natural enzyme-based alternative products in addition to those two. But most people use chlorine or bromine. I prefer bromine because it is a little gentler on the skin and it holds up much better in the heat of the hot water than chlorine does. So chlorine can be a little bit cheaper, but you have to add it more frequently because it breaks down in the heat of the water faster than bromine does. So I just like bromine and I do indeed use tablets in a floater. I put about six in a week. I just kind of toss it in. I set it and forget it. Judging from the chlorine levels in my hot tub right now, I do need to add more of those, but I also do need to shock the hot tub, which again, I do about once a week. So we're going to do both of those things right now. So my floaters right here, I can tell by shaking it. I've actually been out of town for a few days too. So that's maybe why I'm behind on my maintenance a little bit, but I can tell there's nothing in here. So I'm going to take the lid off. There is indeed nothing in there. I don't like to touch bromine tablets or, or chlorine for that matter with my fingers. So I'm just going to kind of pour these in here. I'm going to kind of do it over the water too, in case some of it spills out because it's not going to hurt anything to go into the water. And then I'm going to put the lid back on. And obviously the bromine is coming into contact with us in the water, but it's not coming into contact with us directly the way it would if you were picking up these tablets with your fingers. So now I've added those. I'm also going to go ahead and add the shock since I know I need it. Now, as you know from listening to my videos, I do typically use a chlorine-based shock, but I recently was sent these products from the Mav Aquadoc people, and they had a non-chlorine shock, which I've been using, and I actually really like. And I'm just gonna kind of do a cap full, toss it in. Again, normally I would have my jets on, but I don't for the purposes of this video. And if you wanna see my complete review video of all of the Mav Aquadoc products, check out this video up here, where I go through a complete unboxing and review of every single chemical that they sent me. So now that we've done that, there are other chemicals you could be adding, but those are definitely the basics. Those are definitely the ones you absolutely have to have. There are things that adjust calcium hardness levels. If you've got a water softener system like I do, you probably don't have hard water going into your hot tub. You could have soft water, but most of the time soft water isn't an issue. Hard water is because it can lead to calcium scale buildup on the plumbing of the equipment inside. You won't ever see it, but it can definitely shorten the lifespan of your equipment can also lead to clogging and things like that. So you don't want hard water in your hot tub. So if you don't have a water softener system, it's worth getting a test strip that measures calcium hardness and getting a calcium reducer and adding that to your water periodically as needed. The other kind of chemical you could add is a metal reducer. And this is particularly true if you're using well water. In other words, well water has high mineral content, iron and things like copper. And if you've got a high level of that in your water, that can also be damaging to your equipment. So if you know that you've got well water, it's worth getting a test strip that measures for metals in the water as well, and possibly getting a metal reducer to add to your hot tub water as well. But again, those are kind of unique cases. They're not going to apply to most people watching my videos. Now, if hot tub chemicals leave you totally befuddled and you're just not sure what to do, you've watched a lot of videos, it's well worth considering Swim University's Hot Tub Handbook and Video Course. It's a great product. I recently bought it myself and then I did a complete review video of it. I walk you through the entire thing, both the handbook, which is a PDF that you can print if needed, as well as all of the video modules. And there were seemingly dozens of those available in the course on every possible subject that you can imagine. So if you want to see what that video course and handbook is all about to see if it's worth purchasing, check out my review video right up here. It walks you through it. It's going to be a step-by-step -step process, holding your hand every step of the way. And by the time you are done with it, you are going to be a hot tub expert too. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video.